Hello everybody, welcome to Ageless Rock channel where megalithic fans get to see things from a different perspective. In this video, I'm going to explore a little bit on two rectangular holes which archaeologists call them sarcophagi. It is called Raboran sarcophagus because it is in Raboran village. Raboran village is in the small island of Sumbawa which is part of Lesser Sunda. There are several megalithic sites so isolated that it wasn't until recently we came to know about their existence. It was only in 1992 that the news of discovery was made known to the villagers and excavation began in 1996. Austronesians have a great reputation of being great seafarers reaching all the islands in the Pacific Ocean by sailing and rowing a small boat. However, I wonder if that ever happened because they didn't drop by Australia despite being so near. Indonesia was colonized by the Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, British, French, and Japanese. Even the Americans were here from 1949 to 1950. It was called United States of Indonesia. But none of them seems to be very interested in Chambawa. The most famous event that struck this island was the volcano eruption in 1815. The explosive force of Mount Tambora can be heard as far as Sumatra and Malaysia. The explosive force is four times more powerful than Krakatoa volcano eruption in 1883. More than 70,000 Sumbawans died and it caused global cooling where the following year, in 1816, is known as the year without summer. Despite such devastation, people of Sumbawa remained strong and lived on. Mount Tambora, which once stood at 4,300 meters, is now 2,850 meters high. My point is, Living around volcano cannot explain the lost civilization to the point of extinction as what archaeologists seem to always say. So Mount Merapi in Java causing Buddhists to abandon Borobudur temple is a highly unlikely event. Don't be confused by another site called Ai Renung. They seem to be mentioned together. These are two sites you can go to separately. It is only 2.5 kilometers from an aerial view, but the walk around the hilly area can be a perilous two hours from Ai Renong. Both Raboran and Ai Renong are in Moyo Hulu district. Once you reach the destination, you will feel triumphant, but only megalithic fans will feel it is more than worth the trouble. It is like you found a national treasure. Although archaeologists call this sarcophagus, there isn't any dead body found here. In fact, even the locals have no clue what happened here. If not for the rectangular opening, I would say it looks like those giant jars you can find in Laos. I wonder if this is an unfinished work of something that has to do with container rather than sarcophagus. The most knowledgeable people should be the locals, but yet, they too have nothing much to say. When you look from the top, you will realize that this is just a narrow rectangular hole that is very unlikely to be a sarcophagus. It is too narrow to fit an adult. It is not very long either. If this is a royal sarcophagus, it will be for the king's baby. There is always a connection to the religion of the country. But the one in Peinan, in Taiwan, has no story. So to link aborigines of Taiwan making rectangular holes in bedrock as tombs is going to be even harder for mainstream archaeologists. What are the odds that Austronesians from Taiwan to Sumba had the same idea of a tomb without a lid? Rectangular holes can be several things in archaeology. This narrow sarcophagus could have been a water tank if this is next to a cave temple 
like the one in Pital Kora Caves in India. There are many rectangular holes in bedrock in India, but they are mostly recognized as water tanks because it is a typical feature of a cave temple. How about these ones in Italy? Rectangular holes in a bedrock can be found all over the world. Pantellaria tombs in Italy are like the same style. The common feature you can see by now is that they are all shallow and too narrow and short to be used as tombs for adults. Typically, local villagers have legends that come with megalithic sites like this. It is common for animistic inhabitants to believe in angels and demons interacting with humans. They also believe in invincibility granted by spirits. In the eyes of the locals, such impossible hole in a stone has much to do with supernatural than natural world. Between 1945 and 1947, there was a Kalimantan physical revolution in Indonesia where the Dutch had a strong political presence when Indonesia declared independence. Raboran became a training ground to Sumbawan military known as Bala Chucho. They were fighting for independence from foreign powers. The community believes that under the spiritual teacher by the name Sandro Achin, they will become invincible to sharp objects and bullets. There is a magical power that protects them. Young people of Sumbawa Island came to Raboran to be trained and study local martial art known as Silat. In Raboran, there is an interesting legend. It speaks of a beautiful lady in the valley of Patonang by the name of Menir. Men from other kingdoms heard about her beauty and came to ask for marriage. Men, soldiers and warriors were all fighting to win the heart of the most beautiful lady in the kingdom. Soon, Raboran became the battleground for years. The fertile land was drenched in blood. Her peaceful kingdom has brought her too much sorrow. Her beauty became a curse. In the end, there were only three warriors with equal supernatural powers. The three warriors were Jawang Patonang, Balo Kebo and Sangkri. In a surprising decision, she decided to be buried alive. She begged her parents to give in to her request before more calamities befall the once peaceful land. With a heavy heart, her parents agreed. It was a sad ending which could have been avoided if she just migrated to Australia. Ceche wi menir raboran, kekar kemang dadi kasa, ya bokas ati nondasu. Duhai menir raboran, mekarlah bunga menjadi kain putih, membungkus hati tiada dendam. Oh menir of raboran, bloom the flower into white cloth. Wrap the heart without grudge. This is the poem villagers of Raboran will pass on as a reminder that the peaceful land of Raboran is the result of the sacrifice of a beautiful lady. Let's take a reality check. This photo shows a palace of Dompu King in Sumbawa in 1933. Sumbawan construction technology for a palace was a flimsy wooden stick house with thatched roof. This plant-based, environmentally friendly palace is very advanced compared to those who lived 1,000 years ago. The last king of Sangar Kingdom sat in front of his palace showed a very simple lifestyle compared to the Western civilization. It would be hard to imagine that Sumbawans would be interested in carving bedrock for a tomb with ancient soft chisels a few thousand years ago. As for now, we have no clue what happened here. Archaeologists believe that this site has sediments going back approximately 4,000 years ago. Nothing can be related to this rectangular hole. Before the Western world came to Sumbawa, 
rituals dealing with spirits and legends are abound. However, over the next five centuries, Western academicians managed to educate locals that there is no such thing as magic, demons or spirits. A rectangular hole is nothing more than the result of hard-working ancestors with chisels in their hands. All they wanted was to bury a dead baby. Well, that's all for now. Hope you enjoy watching this short presentation on Raboran Sakafagai. See you in the next video and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Sekian, terima kasih.